The invisibles who live on Elmer's back wake him up in the middle of the night every night. They yell and scream and party and dance and do just about anything that will make his life a waking nightmare. Maybe they don't intend to wake him, but that is just what happens when such a ruckus is made. So, once again it's 12.31 in the morning and Elmer wakes up and grumbles and moans and curses at the invisibles on his back. He is still too tired to do much of anything but sit around, watch infomercials and grumble, but he's also just too frazzled to simply return to sleep. After a few hours, the invisibles start complaining that now he is being too loud and Elmer laughs at the hypocrisy of the freeloaders. Elmer's friends regard him as a very strange man, always talking to himself, always arguing with people who aren't there. They don't regard him as particularly dangerous, but they also try to stay out of his way. There's nothing out there except for what we can see, Elmer's friends tell him, and Elmer never says anything back, although he could say a thing or two. He could tell them how every morning he can barely make it out of the door because the invisibles tell him it's too early, or how it's impossible to work sometimes because the invisibles never let him have a moment of silence, or he could tell them how the invisibles like to eat all of his food. But he doesn't say anything like that. He just grumbles. He doesn't want to get locked up, you know. But he also knows he has to do something to get rid of these freeloaders. He tries to shake them off. But the invisibles are smart and they plunge anchors into him to keep themselves in place. And these things hurt like sharp thorns so Elmer stops shaking. He comes upon a mud puddle and he jumps in. Maybe this will scare them away, he thinks. But it doesn't. He listens to their complaints and moans and cries. But none of them let go of him. About to give up, Elmer has another idea. He jumps into the latrine. Maybe if I make myself really disgusting, they will willingly let go. And, and it works. It takes about an hour, but pretty soon the Invisibles get so sick and disgusted, they leap off of Elmer's back and run far, far away. And Elmer's happy. Except, of course, for smelling like shit. He washes himself off and goes on with his life, the Invisibles quietly plotting revenge. We have to find someone to live on, and now, says one, but we can't jump back onto them unless they're laying down, and the only way we can reliably do that is if we drug them says another. Then let's have a party and hope Elmer shows up, says a third. Good idea, says yet another. And together they plan a party. And Elmer does show up and so do many of his friends, but unfortunately for the invisibles, Elmer does not drink, he does not fall asleep and leaves the party early. The invisibles are pretty angry despite the fact that there are dozens upon dozens of bodies to choose from. So, the Invisibles do the only logical thing they can think of. They each choose a new body they think will suit them. I'll choose this pretty lady, because I want to get into fashion, says one. I'll choose this old man, because I've always wanted to be wise, says another. And in this fashion, they all choose their new bodies. And when they are all comfortable leeching off of their new hosts, they all decide to go after Elmer. Poor sad Elmer. The first ploy they would make was to try to be nice to Elmer. So they would send Elmer all manners of flowers, chocolates, and other fine gifts, all with the intention of apologizing and getting him to take them back. When this, obviously, doesn't work, they resort to subtle, passive-aggressive tricks and games. And when this doesn't work, they resort to things a little more sinister, like you know, chasing him down the subway and attempting to shoot him with a tranquilizer gun. Yeah. Eventually, Elmer has enough material to warrant a restraining order, and since he can't restrain someone who is invisible, he has to file the complaint against the people the Invisibles are leeching off of. This all makes the Invisibles very depressed. Who are we now, they all think to themselves. They all like their new bodies, but somehow, they really don't seem to fit anymore. So, when inevitably, the hosts become just as tired of the Invisibles as Elmer did, and ditch them by jumping into latrines yet again, the Invisibles were all alone. Again, and with no one to leech off of but each other.